trying to bring stuff together and not always add. And there is a tendency when you first get a team in a gym, you know, at times you want to just shove stuff in. And there, to me, there is a progression in how you periodize stuff. And so you think through what do you want to get in in the first like four days knowing there's an inner squad scrimmage on Saturday and then you have a day off and then you're going to come back for another chunk of time just trying to have that teaching sort of mindset today and um, we, we did it. We cleaned up a lot of the stuff we put in instead of just piling on. But I this is only what day three, day four, whatever. But is there anything that you learned about yourself early on in the first year you deal with the Sixers that can help you right now at this team going forward? I mean, just the important, you're always reminded how important training camp is. And you think that, oh, we're with each other for a long time and a long season, and this is true. But they come in excited. And so did Jakar and Michael Carter Williams and, and you know Spencer and all those guys. But you just reminded that whatever stage you've got your team, it's an important period of time. And so things like conditioning, still rule the day. Things like defensive principles and putting those in, still rule the day. You're doing it with a different audience and talent level. But you're just reminded of, of that, and I felt it even earlier with the younger guys, you know, the importance of, of that. that. That is sort of like my first glance answer to your question, you know, what have I learned over my days doing this, no matter who the team is. And just right now, before it was more teaching, now it's more schematic teaching. Or... It's always teaching to me. It really is, and it's it's almost like a, a language class. Like, if I come on and start talking about, listen, if, if so-and-so gnashes and I want to, you know, go to the Malone line and if somebody bears you a pick and roll and I can go on and on and that's Peyton X, so let's get that man out of it. Like, if you come into a gym, I don't care if it's Al Horford or whoever, it's like, what's he saying? And there is a responsibility that I have to, to teach the language. And it's almost like you're coming up, I am. It's a dictionary. Here's a word, this is what it means, offense, defense. And... It's always teaching. I don't care if you're at Al Horford or Nolan's Noel. It's, it's, I see it like that, especially at the start. But now it's, now it's that Ben's been more vocal um, this year, how, how does that help you reinforce what you're saying when you have a point guard that's sort of being more vocal amongst his teammates and leading in that way? It, it's definitely helpful, but I feel like for me the, the biggest excitement is the fact that he feels clearly a confidence level to do it. And somebody asked me yesterday, well, why, what do you see? And I said it quickly, this is what I see. He feels, he had a hell of a summer putting in time. He's now back with the ball, and I'll point God all-star. And he knows, he knows what I just said. He knows what a Nash is and a Berejao and a Malone liner. He knows, and so you're not tormented by what's going on, I'm not still sure. He's, he's, he's thinking less and playing more. And it produces a confidence where he can say things to people because they don't know, and he's doing it. And, and that in itself is sort of my joy that I'm seeing with him right now. Brett, how does back and he studied the tape and I have not done that yet as a scheme to like just you know produce the environment and I will the, the good news what everybody should hear is oh, for me it is, is how many shots is he cast up and there aren't any and I think that's massive um, I, he hasn't passed up and we study it and he understands what I think and, and what we're trying to do, I, I, I will say, and maybe you don't agree, but I, I'll say it, we gotta be careful that, like, this isn't, this still isn't the thing. You, you know, to me, 
He is a 23-year-old all-star. It, it, it's, it's, it's hugely important that we understand it, especially in April, May, and June. And we have to set the stage. But my, my, my center point where I still see the world with him is I think he could be the best defensive player in the NBA. I think he has to feature an all NBA defensive team because he can. He's going to grow as a leader and a point guard that we just, we just talked about. And I think the other stuff is just going to like just progressively evolve. And so that's what I say to him. And that's what I really think. And we're going to continue to try to produce an environment that can let him grow in that area. Shots, that's the people that he that's exactly right, Keith. You know, because the, the, the groundswell of this thing is is bizarre. I understand it, but it, it, it gains its own life, and he obviously listens. And I hope he does. You know, so there's sometimes if he don't want to shoot, he don't want to shoot. And so it's always about okay. Well, that sounds great, but what about April, May, and June? I understand that, and the starting point needs to be now. And so how do we do that? Is it corner three spacing? I think so. Is it people want to mill pick and rolls, whatever? I think so. You can all pinpoint different areas where it could show itself. But to like jam it down somebody's throat and like only say this is his judgment day, there's lots else going on that we should be looking at as well. Sort of the other side of that though, how much of a tolerance do you have for what might be a bad shot really this evening? He's a month, if he's a month getting to shoot 20% from the corner, Absolutely not. And, 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 you know, I think, Derek, it's, uh, for me, it's, it's my tolerance level and, oh, Ben miss, oh, Ben miss, is, is, is really, really sort of uh, high. I have a high tolerance level. I, I'm going to let him. I'm with him. Like, we're going to get this thing to a level that, you know, he's comfortable with shooting and, he put in the time. If somebody didn't put in the time, I'm not with it. Like, I don't feel a responsibility to do that where it's going to hurt the team. I don't. But I know what he did over the summer. And I know where I have to help him get. And so my, my tolerance level is completely high. There are going to be some times you say, hey, maybe Joel could have been posted or whatever. But the good news to me also is, is the team feels this. If they don't like wondering like what's going on here like yeah, they're supportive of it and so that's uh that is completely how i see it how's that how's that year been just a pogo stick just like a bouncy athlete um you know had one or two plays today that you're like okay just an incredibly gifted athlete he's making some shots he's playing hard i think we're all gonna enjoy you know how this plays out with Shake and Furcon and Matisse and Zaire. That's an interesting group. And, um, and you know, when, when you sort of talk about the young guy, I think that he's had a real bounce and has been excellent. Two more guys? Defensively, especially. Matisse has gotten some mentions, especially defensively, from his teammates when we talked to them. Is there anything specific that you've noticed that you just kind of go, wow, has cool he can, What he can do is he can cover a mistake as well as any young kid that I've coached. So for instance, if he like tries to go steal a ball and misses, and somebody back cuts, he can make up ground, get back in a play and block a shot. He can overhelp as the lone man defensively, and they skip past it and go chase off somebody in our red corners and block his shot. He, he can cover a mistake incredibly well. And, you know, when you find those guards that can do that, uh, those perimeter wings that have that type of uh, ability to roam and cheat and still cover their mistakes, it, it's pretty impressive. I think that he'll fit completely into what we're trying to do defensively. Brett, how long does it take someone to think for their voice to really resonate in a locker room? Even someone like Al, he doesn't want to come in and be like the guy who's just yelling at everyone. Um, I don't think you could quantify that. I, I, I do, I will say this, because I've seen a lot of locker rooms. It's always by a mile, actions that speak so much louder than words. And Al's like history and resume 
puts him high on a on an opportunity list to be he's got a greater chance of being heard more quickly because of who he is and then what impresses me is how he talks to the guys in practice and he's got a level of care and communication that is unique how do, how does that translate into you know a calendar it's a month two months whatever i don't know but his foundation and his starting point is high and uh I think he's just got a real role and a place for that. I think he's going to be excellent at it. Thanks, Brett. Thanks.